I think insects probably are more misunderstood than a lot of other animals. Probably the biggest misconceptions or oversights is just how much they do. No forest ecosystem is going to survive without insects in it. Hi, and it's Code 148, not Andrews, Prowler, not 13A, 61, protect 2 for 13, Victor 6. Fire has become an important issue throughout much of the western United States and even other areas of the world. Oftentimes we try to stop the fire and solve issues in preventing it, but we really don't know what happens once the fire has occurred and how do we restore it. We look at things from this huge overarching perspective where the world is on fire and we can't do anything about it. But from an ecological perspective, everything has a place. Our primary focus for this research project is post-fire insect communities and how they might affect revegetation. Everything we do that affects something little, we think it's little, but over time that's actually a really big deal. And that gives me hope. I am working on a PhD at Northern Arizona University in the School of Forestry. We are headed out to one of my sites in the Centennial Forest. They had a bunch of slash piles out here that they burned two years ago and they've been letting me use for research. Okay. Yeah. All right, party. If you look at a lot of the post-fire restoration process, a lot of times you've got populations pretty close by. So you're really looking to stabilize the soil and keep erosion down and flood control. The Forest Service has been using those kind of techniques for a really long time, but we don't actually know how that interacts with the rest of the ecosystem. No one's thinking about the animal life and what they can do and what they do do. Our hope with this work is getting an understanding of what insects might be able to offer in some of these restoration efforts. Ah, spider. Oh, it's a big spider. I don't know what that beetle's doing. Insects are extremely abundant. There's thought to be 250 million insects for every person. 250 million organisms on a certain location can do a lot and really quickly. Insects are interacting with plants. Plants are interacting with each other. Insects are interacting with each other. Everything's interacting with the soil. And I think all of those things have to come together to understand how the forest is going to regenerate itself. Ooh, bugs. We look at slash piles, which are residue, basically, from thinning projects all over the forest. So you burn a slash pile, and it can get upwards of five, six, seven hundred degrees Celsius. Those are the kind of temperatures that you may see in a very hot wildfire as well. This was a slash pile, probably, you know, four meters wide by a couple meters tall. Um, so you can tell there's not much left of it. We have plots set up in the slash pile burn areas and then plots set up outside of that in a control area so we can compare the insect communities that are coming to each. So this is what we're using to trap surface insects. This is actually called a pitfall trap. These are intended to catch insects that just kind of walk across the ground and fall in, hence pitfall. We'll have to dump it out and sort them out to see what's in there. Bloop! What we got? It's great to have students that come with experiences. You know, when you've been away and seen the world, and I think Chrissy's been to five continents, you really come with a goal in mind and you know how to accomplish it. I grew up, just thought airplanes were the coolest thing ever. I was like, I'm gonna fly airplanes. I applied to the Air Force Academy thinking I was gonna be a pilot, but I actually ended up being an aircraft maintenance officer. My first deployment, I had 35 of my own technicians, a couple of our own airplanes. We were in Kyrgyzstan just doing what we do, you know, moving people, moving equipment in and out of Afghanistan. She comes with skill sets that most students don't. So she is making a lot of ground quickly and we're actually doing quite a bit of work that would have taken maybe other students, younger and less experienced, more time to do. I have insects of every kind. You name it, I probably have it. A lot of what I've actually sorted and counted so far is the beetles. So this is a vial of specimens from Forest Road 760, which is my north site here. When we bring them back in here, that's when we're really sorting them out to different groups of insects, and we're just looking for those overall patterns. Let's see, that's a fly. 
So this is where we image a lot of our specimens, um, especially if we don't know what they are. This is a really good way to get a composite image with some very detailed pieces of the animal itself, and that helps us so we can send off the images to experts and they can help us identify what we've got in our forest here. Once we get an identification on them, we actually know a little bit more just based on their life history, what they might be doing out there to see what impact they're having. I don't know if insects are the biggest factor in helping to rebuild a forest after a fire, but I think they certainly are a factor that we need to look at. If we can understand what insects will survive and what insects will come back to these sites, we might be able to actually use them to help us stabilize some of these areas faster than we could just by throwing down seed or throwing down mulch. That's kind of the whole point of this work, is understanding what they do and how they can help. By learning more what's happening, we can accelerate the process, we can utilize insects, we can add material that will promote their recolonization and make it a successful restoration. I think the word for me that best describes the Pat Tillman Foundation is family. When we all get together, it's amazing. It's inspiring to have that many people in one room who are really trying to make a difference. We may not be in the service anymore, but we're still serving in some way. Climate change is gonna be a, a big thing over time. As temperatures change, as weather patterns change, I'm sure we're gonna see fire patterns change. So I think that what we're doing, just to even understand this little piece of forest recovery and restoration might actually help us in the future to put things back. <laughs>